This is part two. In this, I'm going to look at the uh, horoscope of uh, Julian Assange's arrest. And then uh, that also, of course, is a, uh, a, a, the positions of the planets as they are. And so I'm going to try and get those on a bywheel so that we can see the transits operating at this time, see if we can uh, see anything uh, about them and um, uh, draw some conclusions from them. But I wanted to say, uh, something about Neptune on the ascendant, um, uh, uh, opposite this this Saturn again, um, because if, if you take on that role of uh, some some sense of of saviour, some sense of uh, allowing forces of the collective to move through you and you become part of them in inevitably with neptune you have to some you have to sacrifice some part of your individual self and indeed julian assange has he sacrificed his personal freedom uh, clearly uh, he couldn't hold down uh, long relationships uh, lest uh, those people that he's with in an intimate partnership uh, unless they're bothered by these forces that he is bringing bringing towards himself by taking on those forces the opposition often has a lot of courage to it and you know sometimes you're one side sometimes you're another he's had to play the neptunian game as well about being invisible he absconded from his uh, bed conditions if you like uh, uh, a very clever man in many ways and then found a place to go to secure himself very frightened of course of being uh, uh, either abducted himself or murdered himself or, or extradited extradited to the united states and then uh, a possibly the um, a closed court to a grand jury of a closed court no one would ever see what evidence he has those are all possibilities still, and of course we must um, uh, keep, keep those for those interested. We must keep keep that keep that th those thoughts up uppermost in our mind. But what I wanted to say is um, to the tendency of a collective figure like this, who is now under the spotlight, who is now brought out into the open, and what he knows and the information that is contained within him, this Mercury in the ninth house, which he's likes to publish that, that stuff that he's found out in that 12th house through the Jupiter, Neptune and the moon in there, uh, a true affinity, as I say, with the lost souls of the world and those lost souls to be that would otherwise be, uh, that are uh, otherwise be forgotten uh, unless you expose these kind of uh, things that are supposedly done on behalf of the governments that we uh, brought in, but of course they're not because uh, there is a secret super state somewhere. There are subversive organizations um, that uh, like to play around, if you like, with the power that they've got. But under, on the surface, of course, we're given all the flim flam of government. Uh, you know, I mean, Theresa May said, uh, no one is above the law. So she comes out and get, brings out that hoary old piece of nonsense. No one's above the law. Uh, what, what got me most, by the way, actually, I'm going to go off on a bit of a tangent here, I think. Uh, what got me most yesterday was the Alan Duncan on Radio 4. And uh, uh, he was there, he was being interviewed about Julian Assange, and he had this kind of um, feeling of... Uh, uh, arrogant uh, delight, a, a kind of uh, vengeance be mine, self-serving, self-satisfied uh, uh, tone to what he was saying, a kind of upper hand tone, you know, uh, uh, to, to Alan Duncan, a, a kind of inheritance probably from what he uh, from the, the job that he first had in the oil company uh, it's probably rubbed off on him in some sense um what when i was doing my research of course i found out that in 2010 Alan Duncan was actually um, had a dossier put on him by the United States Secret Services because he was one of the upcoming um, MPs, uh, pro pro had his eyesight, of course, on, the, on being prime minister. And as all uh, secret service organizations do across the world, they have dossiers and things on everybody. And mm, it was that uh, the fact is that uh, Julian Assange 
uh, I think exposed some of that. So it's, it's really not very good that if you have a personal axe to grind, that you can stand or sit down in positions of power in the places like BBC Radio Force stations and say such utter tripe or, 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 or that, that, that self-serving feeling of rightness now. That somebody, uh, how can somebody do that? Uh, th there is a potential life that's going to be killed that may be set away for life uh, or for doing what? What? What did Julian Assange do? Yes, there may have been things we, he, he fiddled with which has disturbed the order, uh, the, the, the order underneath the uh, surface level of consciousness. Yes, but um, all heroes have to do that. They have to fight the dragon in some way, his being this this undercover kind of uh, life that we never see within the mil military industrial complex and behind closed doors of power and governments. Um, but uh, uh, so what his crime was uh, is uh, journalism. That's it. I mean, The Guardian, for example, uh, relished in uh, uh, WikiLeaks. So did the Washington Post. So did the New York Times. Even Donald Trump, I think he said it's something about 100 who used WikiLeaks. Uh, he loved w w WikiLeaks. Of course, he's now kind of distanced himself from it. But um, th these people, all, all of them, used some of the information gained by WikiLeaks and gained thereby a great deal of money and uh, printed everything. I mean... What about Glenn Greenwald? When, when he was intrinsically involved in um, releasing the information uh, gleaned by Edward Snowden, another informant. Oh, they said, publish that, the Guardian published that, and now suddenly all the journalists have disappeared. The Guardian has kind of placed a distance. At that. And what, what about their indictments? They published the material, they gained from it materially, and through a kind of acumen of the press and so on, you know, the guardians of the truth. Oh, yes, really. So we get Alan Duncan yesterday coming on, giving us all this um, stuff in a uh, obsequious, uh, uh, really um, perverse kind of way that uh, really got my goat, frankly. So I had a little look into Alan Duncan, you know, when he's repeating this phrase, no one is above the law. So let's have a little look into some of his uh, dealings. Excuse me just a minute while I stop the video and find them. There we go, just pause the recording. Okay, I presume now, I hope that wasn't too disturbing to the video. Yes, I'm going off at a tangent, and I may have to return to another video to do to the things that I initially said. But that's the intention, anyway, of following this line. But let's have a look at Anne and Duncan's record. Okay, so we remember the expenses scandal exposed by the, uh, the Daily Telegraph. It was, this was to do with, uh, especially to do with properties, and that MPs were allowed to have tax relief or mortgage tax relief on properties that they used in town or that they used most or whatever it was. Anyway, there was a big hoo-ha and um, a lot of MPs uh, were brought to, ta to, brought to task for it. Some had to, was, I think only a couple went to jail for a couple of months or something. But I mean, r really, I can't remember who it was that had his lake, you know, uh, emptied, you know, the moat emptied, you know, put that on the expenses sheet. Well, Digging a, a little bit deeper into the Daily Telegraph archives, um, Alan Duncan charged for his expenses £598 to overhaul a ride-on lawnmower. Well, uh, uh, really, I mean, what's that got to do with public expenses? I mean, you and I, all the taxpayers in the country pay for that. £598 to overhaul his ride-on lawnmower. Well, I'm sure Alan's got a lot of pleasure uh, from his, uh, from, you know, mounting his ride on lawnmower, but really, do we have to pay for that kind of thing? Is that rather underhand for a person that is no, no, no one's above the law? And then we learn that he has spent £41 to fix a puncture on it. What's that got to do with expenses? Expenses for politicians that we pay for. What's he doing moaning on in a television programme about 
how they give them a pittance. And there's nothing, you know, 61,000 pounds salary quite a few years ago. The man is a multimillionaire. He earned his money through various uh, 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 jobs, but particularly in the oil industry, as I said earlier on. And, uh, and he has all this mortgage tax relief stuff. I mean, during the course of six years, his, his expenses for mortgage tax relief alone or mortgage and yeah, yeah. It's something of, of that nature. I can't remember exactly, but here it was. I've got these figures uh, from the Daily Telegraph online. £127,658. And apparently this was only about £130 short of, of the total amount that you could actually have. You know, the cap, the limit on it. So, now, where were these houses? He owns one um, some, somewhere out the country and one in London. And um, the other thing that I learned about was that uh, who owned the one in London? Apparently it was in the hands of his uh, then lover. And we must give Alan Duncan, and I give Alan Duncan due credit for coming out as gay. And But at that time, of course, to come out as gay, admit that you had a gay lover uh, living with you, would have been uh, uh, someone difficult in high public office. And uh, But he did come out, and he came out uh, uh, very strongly, and we have to, um, you know, have to give him all due credit for doing that. But really, then turning his partner into some kind of liability, uh, limited liability company or something. Who, who owned it? You know. So he 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 gained he gained um, money through that, and then tried to fiddle it, and then said he lived here and said that like like a lot of them did. And remember, he's saying no one is above the law. Ah, but then the most crooked of all. What did he do, you know, in the right to buy scheme? He was living next door in London to an elderly gentleman who lived in a, an 18th or 19th century house um, uh, uh, done by the um, uh, by the uh, uh, the council. And he was in there. And then what did Alan Duncan, dear Alan Duncan, do? Well, what he did was he, he gave this, he gave money uh, for his uh, neighbour to buy the property. So the right to buy a severely, very, very discounted, uh, a very discounted price for a property worth many more hundreds of thousands of his property pay for it. And you think, oh, uh, dear, Alan's become a philanthropist all of a sudden overnight. Wow. Great. No, 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 no. Three years later, that uh, man uh, next door sold, sold Alan Duncan the property that he'd loaned him the money to buy to making an, a massive profit on it. You know, obviously doing it up and it was probably worth, I don't, uh, it, it didn't say I couldn't find the exact amounts. But really, how tawdry is that? So this is a man that says in public, no one is above the law and there's all these kind of scandals and expenses. Now, one thing just to kind of balance, and keep a balance of the uh, uh, thing. I did find something about Alan Duncan that I rather admired, and that is that he has a, he has an interest in spiritual matters. And um, I didn't know this, but there's an interest in shamanism here. Um, and if you know anything about shamanism, um, one of the things you have to do is to find your power animal. Well, um, in the West, when we practice this, we call it the animal soul. Well, I did a little bit of digging into, um, into this and found, uh, let's see, yes, and it, I, I found something. I'm just going to pause the recording while I bring that up. It won't be a sec. Okay, well, I think I found the thing here. And uh, what happened is I, I'm going to show you here a picture of uh, Alan Duncan's power animal as um, uh, as I hope that you can now see it uh, on screen. Uh, that's it, I think so. Uh, no, stop. Okay, I'm sorry for that hiatus. I'm not going to clip it here, but I just wanted to share the screen there. And there you can see the famous man himself, Alan Duncan, and as you see the famous uh, phrase that he used yesterday, no one is above the law. And as you can see, his animal soul is over here. And I'm sure you can see that's a, a rather fitting match. I apologize for the, um, the difficulties there that I, uh, the, that I had, and I hope that hasn't spoiled the video too much for you. Anyway, in the next video, we will look at um, 
uh, uh, Julian Assange's uh, latest um, uh, aspects in transits and so on, and see where that can take us uh, from, uh, and take him indeed from uh, now till uh, about two years ahead. <laughs>